viewers. Hey guys, welcome to uh, Cigar Chat, brought to you live on CigarFederation.com, uh, broadcast around the world, the Armed Forces Radio Network. Thanks for tuning in wherever you are out there in the world today. Uh, Rob from Cigar Federation here with you as always. Got special guest host, the big tuna, dropping Seth bombs. Seth, Seth's here with us, man. How you doing? Speaking the knowledge, baby. Speaking the knowledge. Just roll. So you're just going to be quiet, then that's good. Um, no, I appreciate you. <laughs> Off to a good start. I appreciate you uh, helping out. Logan is on baby patrol uh, this evening, so he couldn't make it. Um, but more importantly, we've got uh, Joel from Crux Cigars joining us. Joel, thanks for taking the time, man. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thanks for having me. How are you doing, everybody? Well, I'm doing well, Seth. You doing all right? I'm I'm chipper. Let's, I'm, I'm doing great. <laughs> you just finished your uh, finished your dessert. You got the Ray Bans going. You're ready to. Uh, you're, you're ready, ready to, to dive into this. Ready to dive into these waters and swim. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Let's well let's do it. Uh, Joel. Okay. So Crux Cigars. You guys are new on the scene. Um, within the last you know within the last year, you came to IPCPR. You had five different cigars. Uh, five or six. Five. Five. Uh, five different cigars for everybody to check out. That's kind of a lot of cigars to show up with. Uh, give us a little bit of your background, um, and then tell us how the show went for you. You know, the uh, the show went really well um, as as kind of our our inaugural uh, show. It uh, was better than we really expected. You know, coming out with five lines all at once, um, it was a little bit of a bold choice, but uh, maybe maybe crazy. But uh, you know, it seemed like the thing to do because each one of those lines has its own identity. And you know they each have their own their own little segment um, in the in the industry. So, um, but our history is is basically as retailers. So we've been retailers up in Minnesota since the early '90s, and uh, love this industry. Love all the kind of the the groups that you become involved with that you wouldn't normally get associated with. Um, just all the all the good times, and you know, fall in love with premium cigars a long time ago, and and uh, that's really the core of the of the whole journey is that premium cigar is right at the heart of that. And we wanted to make our own version of it and, and kind of do honor to the industry at the same time. So cool. We got to, you know, I'll, I'll jump in with a quick audience question. This is good follow up. Um, and I want to find out who this was from here. This is from Steve. Uh, no, it wasn't from Steve. Where was it? It was right in here. I can't remember who it was from, but they, they, basically the question was, what was the idea for you guys? What was the impetus of going from, uh, retailer to manufacturer. What was what got you guys over that hump and made you want to take that step? Well, a big part of it was that as retailers in Minnesota, it's, it's a tough state, uh, very high tax. Uh, I feel like we're at the top of our game as far as retailers go, uh, but there's there's really a, a limit to what we could do here. So the uh, manufacturing side, the being a, creating a brand, was really the next logical step. <laughs> With a lot of relationships over the years, there's a lot of mentors that have really guided us into this into this new direction and uh, it's been a great journey so far and it's you know hopefully a start of a, a long journey that way so are you still uh, involved as a as a retailer not as much you know we spend a lot of time making sure we found the right personnel to kind of take that retail store on and uh, and man that uh, facility um, as far as that goes but uh, so still stopping in and, and on and on regular basis when we're in town and things like that but you know this is our this is our focus now 99% of the time so cool you guys have a and you guys are very well known it's a very good retail store in Minnesota I've never been there I've heard a lot of great things about it you have a great selection um, just for the listeners if you're ever in Minnesota it's tobacco grow correct correct yeah so yeah. if you're in Minnesota guys stop at tobacco grow the home of crux <laughs> Well, thanks for the, thanks for the plug. The plug. <laughs> no, but, ser but seriously, staff. you guys. No, I mean it's it's a really big, they they have really big accounts. They have a lot of a lot of big names that come in there. I know you guys are at the Ahe account. You're closer to Tatsuaye too, and, and many others. Um, yeah. So. Yeah, it's a there's a lot, of, a lot of exciting brands in the industry, and uh, as as retailers, our focus was always to try to bring those brands in um, early and often, and uh, really give the, the consumers the opportunity to try some really cool cigars out. And there's some cool cigars on the in, in the market right now, as you guys know. So that was always our focus, and hopefully with Crux, we've created some things that some other retailers would be excited to bring into their shelves, too. 
Cool, yeah. So, I mean, you talk about there, there are a ton of cool cigars in the market, um, and, I mean, yours included. You guys have, you know, a bunch of different... Uh, a bunch of different cool sizes. You're, you're sticking with some some of the cool classic sizes, um, smaller ring gauges, but larger ring gauges too. You're hitting every every different uh, every different avenue of the of that size range. Uh, we got a lot of questions on that too, so we'll get into that in a minute. Um, so, give well, actually, tell me a little bit about the name Crux. Where did that come from? Well, Crux is uh, it's a word that I've always kind of used in my normal vocabulary. Um, it kind of means core or seed. Uh, but I always like the word, and it's it's a short word, so it's kind of a cool name for it. It's a cool word for a brand, uh, but it does mean it's Latin for cross, and there's kind of a lot of ways you can go with that. And for us, as far as the brand itself goes, the uh, the crux word meaning seed or core or primary is that's kind of how we approach this whole uh, brand generation. Is we down to Nicaragua finding our manufacturer, working with the different manufacturers and picking out the ones that, the, the one that we ultimately chose, and then testing every one of those tobaccos, tasting all of their, their uh, offerings, finding other ones, and then blending every cigar from the ground up. And then we came up with the name. You know, so we started with the, started with cigars and then came, created the brand identity uh, much further down the road. But so it really fit well with how we, uh, how we approached the whole creation process. You know, the, the brand is really cool. The graphic uh, graphics have a really good look to them. I, really, I like the look of it. I was actually going to ask what the, the idea was behind the uh, the cross. It's kind of a it's like a dagger look to it. Uh, that's that's in the uh, in the name there. But you already answered that question. Um, so we've had uh, in the past. I know you, you're familiar with uh, with some of the reviews that we've done. Uh, Jared uh, was uh, 007 MI6 on our site. He loves your stuff. Nymphomaniac naturally gave it a 96. Passport, which is what I'm smoking here. I'm, I'm smoking the Corona. I gave it a 95. Uh, the little Skeeters, um, he gave that a 95. We're giving away some passports and some Skeeters later in the show. Uh, but uh, give us, let's uh, let's talk about the Nymphomaniac first, because we got the Nymphomaniac Natural and the Dark. So give us a little bit of the background on those. Yeah, the Nymphomaniac that was uh, kind of came across that Nympha shape um, in the you know the delving into the history. Uh, side of things, and uh, so it's a 7 by 33 Ninfa, um, which is a shape that pretty much hasn't been available in the United States in decades, so uh, pretty unusual, very long and, and slender, you got one there. Yeah, yeah, I got one here so you guys can check it out. Keep talking. I don't even have any in my office, so um, they're back ordered. Um, <laughs> so we took that idea, the Ninfa idea, tapered both ends, and uh, the name kind of spun right from that, you know, Ninfa Maniac, have a little fun with it, and uh, it's it's it was it was a unique cigar and, and it, I think it was a great launch for the brand. We did release that a couple months prior to the show. We got some great attention off of that, and people sit, are uh, really liking it. And get obviously a couple nice reviews don't don't hurt. So that was. Uh... <laughs> so what are the the specifics on the uh, on the blend? Wrapper, binder, Nymph- filler, all that. Yeah, sorry. The Nymphomaniac is uh, is Nicaraguan filler with an Indonesian binder and uh, and a Jalapa wrapper. And then the Nymphomaniac Dark is the same same filler and binder with a Jalapa Sun Grown wrapper. Okay. You get a little more richness, a little more dark berry out of that Sun Grown wrapper than out of the, the Shade Grown one. Yeah, that was a, that's a cool cigar to, to launch first to kind of get your name out there. It's a cool shape. You got the, the play on words with the name. Um, you know, it's got a really cool look about it. I had seen a lot of it and heard a lot about it. I haven't actually had a chance to smoke it yet. I got these samples from you guys at IPCPR, but. That's the, I can imagine that was a good a good way to make a nice splash with yeah it, with that it ended up being really interesting yeah we got a lot of looks just because of that unique shape and the kind of the different take on it and a lot of Spanish brands and things like that and just totally went opposite that a little bit and tried to make our own statement. Mm-hmm. That's a so, great cigar. Thank you. It's really you. it's really like good. It. Now were you, and this, I'm gonna this is a question following up on that you're releasing a Ninfa. 33 ring gauge. It's 2014. Everyone's going for 60s and 70s. Was there a part of you that was like, this is going to be a hit, or this is going to just fail because everyone's <laughs> looking for big ring gauges? Because, I mean, it, it's a great size and I love it, but you know, it's one of those things you think about 33 versus them these bigger ring gauges. You're going the complete opposite direction. Right. Right. Well, there's certainly uh, room on both sides of that uh, equation. 
you know, and there certainly are a lot of 60s out there, 70s, 80s even. Um, and uh, it wasn't so much a, a decision on our part not to want to play in that heavily populated pool. It was more of a decision on our part to make some more unique sizes and, and cater to those underserved markets with the smaller ring gauges and smaller Vitola cigars. And three years into it, I know why manufacturers don't make a lot of small cigars. It's, <laughs> it's a lot of work. They're expensive. And... You know, you get a pretty high failure rate if you don't get it right. So, uh, but it's been, uh, it, I think it's been worth it. And, and uh, there's certainly, uh, I think it's going to probably hopefully create some more interest in the in cigars. And, you know, cigars, we have it's kind of the pie of cigar smokers. And we don't want to take a piece of the pie. We want to help to grow that pie and make more cigar enthusiasts. And with a cigar like that, I think we've, we've been able to, to get some attention of some people that wouldn't necessarily grab a cigar. And certainly, have a, I think they've had a great experience with it too. So, a lot of good feedback on that side, at least. Yeah, no, I mean, it's there's not many guys dipping in an infas, and it's you kind of. I know other people have done it. Casada did it with the uh, Esta, Espania Nympha, but you guys are really leading the pack, in my opinion, for nymphas in the U.S. market. No one else is really touching it. So, um, and it's been doing really well, at least for the online media guys' perspective. <laughs> So if you guys would just buy everything we make, that would really help. <laughs> so we just got to buy nymphas all the time and just keep doing it. So. 100 boxes each, and it will be all set. That works. Done. We'll work on it. We'll, I'll, I'll send out an email. <laughs> <laughs> well, since we're talking about you know buying these nymphas, um, what, what's the price point on these? <clears throat> Nymphomaniac, uh, without any taxes, it's uh, $5.99. Oh, wow. Adjusted retail. Wow. So, yeah, very inexpensive cigar in, in the grand scheme of things. Yeah, when you can, when you consider the shape and the size and everything, that's uh, that's. I, I figured it was going to be. I hadn't. I hadn't looked. I figured it was in like the seven or eight dollar range, nine dollar range at least. Right. But, wow. Right. That's uh, that's impressive. Uh, now you had some interesting sizes on the Crux Classic as well, right? On the Crux Classic, um, yeah, we went a little non-traditional um, with while still trying to maintain a little traditional. The uh, classic, of course, the Robusto five by fifty, very traditional Robusto. Um, the uh, Churchill played around with that a little bit. It's a six and three quarter by forty-seven with a marble head finish, and then the uh, Toro is a six by fifty-two and also a marble head. And now marble head is another thing kind of came across in the in the delving into the history books, and that's that Cuban one hundred nine shape, and just it's such a comfortable shape to smoke. It's really awesome. Yeah, as you guys, it is. Just, a, just so you guys can see it, it, it tapers towards the top, but it doesn't come to that fine point that a torpedo normally would. Yeah, um, just so you guys can see it. It's like taking a torpedo and hitting it with a belt sander and kind of smoothing it out. And, but you can punch cut it, V cut it, straight cut it, use a fingernail. You can open it any way you want. So that's a good way to describe it. You kind of sanded it down. Yeah, yeah. That's, what made you it, what, what, what right, made you ahead. want to use the 109 cap? Because it's just, great. I mean, it's terrific. Yeah, you know, and but it's it's something another unique element. You know, um, you come in with a 33 by 7. You you come in with, you know, tapered on both ends. A, a, we made a Purito. Uh, I don't know who makes those out of the gate, but uh, uh, but having that marble head finish was just another unique element that we could incorporate in and, and uh, really feature the, the the skill of the the rollers in the factory and and uh, just one more element to kind of set it apart on the shelf too. It's a lot of competition when you get to the shelf. That's true. That shelf space is king. <clears throat> That shelf space is king. So uh, we've got uh, just a couple minutes before uh, we go to our first break here. Since we're talking about the classic, you, you went over the sizes. Give us a little bit of the rundown on the uh, on the specs uh, for that one, wrapper, binder, filler, all that. Classic is going to be Nicaraguan and uh, Honduran filler, a little bit of Honduran in there, and uh, Nicaraguan binder with a Nicaraguan wrapper. So heavily represented on, on Nicaragua on that blend. Of course, the Bull and Bear is all Nicaraguan. Um, most of our blends have a lot of Nicaraguan uh, flair to them. It's just a few tweaks here and there with some outside country tobaccos, but yeah. So the, and the the profile on that, I mean, based on what, the way you're explaining, it sounds like that's kind of a medium to full strength uh, profile, medium to full. Yeah, uh, that's pretty safe to say. Medium plus, I would say. A um, little more chewy than than the other blends, maybe a little richer mm -hmm. as far as that goes, but got a sweet component to it, kind of mouth watery. It's it's got a mouth watering profile. That's uh, that's good, and it's and it's humble too. I like that. 
<laughs> no, I'm just giving you a hard time. But we'll uh, we're gonna talk. We've got a couple more uh, uh, blends that we'll talk about after this break. We'll also jump into some audience questions. So uh, we'll uh, catch you guys after this break. Hey guys, welcome back to Cigar Chat, brought to you live on CigarFederation.com, broadcast around the world, the Armed Forces Radio Network. Um, thanks for tuning in uh, with us here today. We're here with Joel from Crux Cigars. We've got the big tuna sitting in for Logan. Uh, this next segment's brought to you by Nomad Cigars. Uh, no, Fred over at Nomad's got a pretty cool giveaway going on uh, with some, it's actually their shoes. Uh, they're custom made, uh, yeah, custom made chucks, <laughs> custom graphics on them. They're pretty cool. Uh, go yeah. to CigarFederation.com. You'll see the banner ad right there. Click through, and you can uh, get in on that contest. I think it lasts for uh, it's like three another three weeks left in that contest. So um, you guys can check that out. CigarFederation.com. Click on that Nomad banner to check that one out and get involved in that. So, okay, so we've gone over the Nymphomaniac. We've talked about the Classic. Uh, let's talk about the Passport. That's what I'm smoking right now. I'm smoking the Corona. Um, it's got a nice spice to it. It's a little bit spicier than uh, than some of the cigars that I, I really gravitate toward, um, but there's a nice smoothness to it as well that uh, that I'm really enjoying. I can see. I know. Uh, like I said, Jared gave this a 95. I know what Jared likes to smoke, and I can tell why he gave this a 95. This is right in his wheelhouse. Um, it's a little bit, a little bit, a lot of pepper on there. Nice little spice. Uh, give us a little bit of the background on this one. Well, the passport was. Uh, I. Uh, you know, I kind of think it's, it was our breakthrough moment in the blending room um, when we kind of, we all came back after a lunch break and there was these, the Lanceros were sitting there ready to be uh, sampled. And we had tested it in a 52 and uh, and decided it was pretty tasty and then said we need to taste it in Lanceros. So 40 by 7, you know, a little bigger ring gauge than a, than a you know, a traditional Lancero. But uh, we kind of grabbed those and, and fresh rolled and we sat in the blending room and, uh, that was about the last of the actual blending talk we had for about an hour. It was seven <laughs> of us sitting around the table and just a lot of staring at the cigar and a lot of head nodding. So that was kind of our breakthrough moment um, as far as blending goes. And uh, But uh, it really sings. The wrap relief is a select Ecuadorian wrapper, um, so it, and it really sings in the 40 to 48 ring gauge. You know, we tried it in a little bit lower and a little bit bigger, and it's, it really lives in that in that under 50 ring gauge window. And uh, so we really played around with this. You know, we have five sizes in it. Um, Lancero, the uh, Corona that you're smoking, five and a half by 44. We have a uh, six by 48 with a marble head finish and uh, a 40 by four half Corona that'll be coming out uh, very soon in the next uh, probably two weeks. We'll have those in the country as mm -hmm. well as the uh, four and seven eighths by 48, oh. which is also marble head. Half Corona, I like that size. Yeah, the size on this I'm is great. Go, sorry, go ahead. The half, yeah, I'm smoking the half grown. That's a great size. You like it? Oh, I love it. I love it. I love it. <laughs> Got some poker. Lo Lo Logan, Logan, a bit of a hit. Logan, Logan, with y'all sent sent me um sent me some of the half coronas in the number four. They're terrific. Okay. Just terrific. Yeah, you guys have. Uh, I'm looking at your site here. Your your website is really cool. I really like the way that you guys have done your site. Very easy to navigate, user friendly, has a really good look to it. Not overwhelming. Um, there's all the information that you're going to need is right there. Crux, it's cruxcigars.com. Um, you guys have this listed as kind of like a medium plus, full minus. Um, I think that's that's right on par with uh, with the experience that I'm having. Lots of earth flavors, with some leathery notes in there. Um, you know, the, the the spice at the beginning. I think probably the first half was uh, a little bit strong for me personally. Uh, but as I get into the second half, it's it's kind of smoothing out. I'm really enjoying it. Excellent. Excellent. Thank you. Um, so, yeah, so let's jump in. So, yeah, that's you have that in a bunch of sizes too. I, I'm, I'm eager to try that. Actually, you know what? I think a, a, the Lancero size would probably suit me better than, than the half Corona based on the experience that I'm having right now. Yeah, it really is softer than the half Corona or even the Corona. It's, yeah. it's really a little sweeter, a little creamier. Yeah. Yeah, yeah cre oh, creamy. I uh, I get I have a I have a reputation of calling every cigar creamy, which is not fair because I don't. But um, it's become a joke here on Cigar Federation. So there you go. Anytime anybody says creamy, I have to comment. So I guess I perpetuate it a little bit. Um, that's your white spice. What's well, that? I, let, that's somebody else. Everybody else will use white spice or something like that. So that's your. Yeah. Tag there line. you go. Yeah, that's my that's that's my go-to. White pepper. That's what I mean. Yeah, white pepper. There. Rob, just I got one question. Go now, because I I know 
Joel, I know you guys are using Placencia. I don't think I don't, maybe not everyone knows what ins what inspired you guys to go down to Esteli and work with Placencia. Well, the key to that, first of all, Nicaragua, everything that I enjoy, all the the not everything, but the vast majority of it, Nicaraguan, and uh, and yeah. I think that's that's not a secret to most people right now, and. Uh, and I think it's it, at the time it was still accessible to uh, a couple of guys that wanted to make make a cigar, um, and uh, going through touring the factories, meeting all the guys, everybody gracious, uh, super welcoming. Um, but it, it really landed on Placencia because their tobaccos, their their land under production, it's massive. Their fermentation, the, their tobaccos sitting ready to be used is really massive, um, and that was really the key. If you want to make a good cigar. You make a good blend. You want to make sure you can make that blend year over year, and uh, their volumes of tobaccos was really the, the key to that. So. Yeah. He's got he's got tons of tobacco from all over the place. So Absolutely. It's yep. it's a good it's a good partnership. Yeah, and and not only that, they have the the uh, the, the resources to if the rolling room gets filled to capacity, they've got the resources to add more rollers, and uh, so. Yeah. You don't want to be bound by the the production of, uh, capabilities of that manufacturer, so it's important to get a, a some some of that as well as the tobacco. Okay, so <clears throat> we've got two more blends to talk about, so let's knock those out, and then we'll jump into a bunch of audience questions here. Uh, the Bear and Bull, I think that was I, I, these all kind of came out at the same time, but I think this was the latest to hit the market. Is that correct? Well, yeah, they did kind of come out all at the same time. Um, but the uh, bull and bear, let's say, uh, yeah, I don't know. That was in, the, <laughs> Close in the initial. Let's just say in the initial launch plan, the bull and bear was going to be last. But everything kind of just came in all at once, uh, all late, of course. But um, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, so that was the initial launch plan was to bring that out in the more toward the summer, which is now fall. But uh, the bull and bears, the Nicaraguan puro, went through. Um, tried to hit every major region of Nicaragua and try to get them all in that cigar. Um, and uh, I think you get a lot of energy, a lot of flavor when you when you put all those tobaccos together. So it really lent itself to that big ring gauge, kind of soft and the whole overall experience. It tried it in a, in a much smaller cigar. There's a bull and bear. That's a five and a half by 55, right? Yep. Yeah, I think so, yeah. <clears throat> yeah. So in a big ring gauge, it really, it really is a nice creamy smoke. Um, Oh. A little, a little bit of intensity, but it's it's really palate friendly, and and uh, I think that pulled off well. Now that's kind of your big ring gauge cigar. I mean, you've got it available, like you said, in the two sizes, fifty five, uh, five and a half by fifty five, and a six by sixty. So that's right. kind of, like I said earlier, you, you're you're hitting all the different sides with some of these smaller ring gauges, and then you've got the bigger ring gauge. But um, you know, from what I like, again, I haven't smoked that one. Uh, from what I hear, it plays really well in that size, like you were saying that. This, you're not just pumping out a six by six to just to do it. It's a blend that works well in that size. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, that was. Uh, it, you have to have a sixty. Um, you know, it's 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 a bit like having a cigar company without a Connecticut wrapper. I mean, you, at some point you have to have a Connecticut if you want to sell cigars, and if you want to um, if you want to get a guy to try your cigar, you have to have a sixty or a fifty something, fifty six. And uh, but we put our best foot forward and, and created that. The Bull and Bear, it uh, makes you think of. Wall Street, the finance guys, or also uh, outdoor guys, and uh, they tend to go gravitate toward that big cigar, so it's a good fit. So I'm going to read between the lines there, and we can expect the uh, the Crux Connecticut coming anytime soon. <laughs> um, <laughs> Seth, you were going to say something? <laughs> well, I mean, I was just you know, it's two things. Yeah, I mean, you're right. Everyone has to have a Connecticut. The, the one person who I think has has delivered a Connecticut while not using a Connecticut is Dion with Illusion. I think yeah. he's delivered that softness. Um, that and I, think you, I, I, th I think you guys could do it too. Not not hinting that you should do it, but you should do it. Um, <laughs> so hold on. And then, Knock off Epernay. Okay, I wrote that yeah, down. Yeah. Got it. Knock off Epernay. <laughs> Just call it another region in France. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No problem. When you're when you're looking at Nicaragua tobacco, and this is, and I'm just I'm just rolling right now. Regions. What is your region of choice? My region. Yeah. I love Jalapa. The taste you get from there, the sweetness from that tobacco, it's just fantastic. And it's got some diversity as far as strength, so you're not, you're not really tied down to one intensity or another, and you can do quite a few things with it. So that's 
I'd probably say that's my favorite. We just became best friends if you didn't know that already. So. <laughs> <laughs> Moving on, we can move on now, Ron. I, no, I did. I, I saw the big thumbs up. Seth got a big smile on his face. You didn't ask it's me, but I'll give you my answer anyway. And it's I don't want to know it, Ron. I think mine would be Jalapa as well. I, I I've had uh, I've been lucky enough to go down to, to Nicaragua, sample some of the different uh, types of tobaccos, and that was I wasn't very familiar with Jalapa when I went down there, but when I came back, I was very familiar with it because it's. It's. It, I sought it out. It's. It's got that sweetness, that flavor to it. I like my cigars to have some sweetness to them, um, and it's got a. There's a just a nice sweetness. There's a nice uh, flavor in there that uh, that I really gravitate towards. So, uh, I guess that means. I guess it means we're all. Oh, and it's. It's got a little creaminess to it. We're all best friends now. We're all best friends. This is yeah. awesome. BFFs. Um, the and cool party. so, we got uh, just a couple minutes. We'll talk about the skeeters. This little guy. We're going to yeah. give some of these a little away a little bit later. Another one, Jared, what did he give this one? 110? I don't know. He scored. He loves your cigars, man. Uh, he gave this one a 95 as well. So tell us a little bit about the Skeeters. Only a 95? Yeah. Yeah. It's, it took a dip on that one. Well, Skeeter, Skeeter is, again, you know, it's, it's really an underserved uh, commodity in the cigar business. There's a lot of small format cigars, a lot of machine-made things, and, and uh and these are hand-rolled cigars, the Skeeters are, and there's one team making these cigars for us every day, and they make about 400 a day, and that's about what, we can, what we're making right now, but we're training more rollers and, uh, and getting them going on that. But it's, the goal with the Skeeter was to create a cigar in that small format that tasted like a full-size cigar that uh, would give you some options that really, I don't have time to smoke a Lancer or a Toro or anything, but... Uh, I want to taste a cigar, and I don't want to have to throw away half a cigar when I'm done. So that was really the, the origin of the Skeeter. And, uh, you know, it smokes about 22 minutes, and we've, we've actually started timing things and how many Skeeters it takes to do that. And uh, so <laughs> it's about a two-Skeeter trip to get there. And, That's or cool. one Nymphomaniac, if you prefer. One yeah. Nymphomaniac or two Skeeter. Nice. And so these, uh, they come in packs of, packs of 10, I believe? So yeah, they do. Have. You know, I've got a box right here. Um, I don't know if this will translate well over the Internet. but uh, So the Skeeters are boxes of 40, and inside the box is four 10-packs, just mm. like that. It's okay. just a, like a disposable uh, cigar case. You just take that with you, rip the top open, pop a few out. Uh, once you open it, they do disappear quickly. Um, <laughs> so buy two. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I do like cookies. You open up yeah. a package of cookies and they're gone. Oh, there I love go. that logo. That's the Skeeter logo. Hey, it's a cool logo. Being as I'm, yeah, I'm from Minnesota and and uh, no shortage of mosquitoes here. So the uh, the cigar has usually a twofold uh, purpose when you're outside in, in the summer here. It's one is for enjoyment, and number two is to keep the mosquitoes away. It works fairly well as far as keeping the mosquitoes away. So. And it's not a cure. I don't think uh, Deep Woods or anybody is going to come after me. So, <laughs> so you you can't. Uh, it's, that's not written on the package. It's not. Uh, it's you're you're not guaranteeing no uh, no mosquito bites while you're. While you're no. Smoking. Yeah. Um, no. Probably can't guarantee that, but uh, one less for sure. <laughs> all right. So we've covered all the blends. Um, so let's we'll get into uh, some audience questions here. Uh, you know, just on the other side of this break. So we'll be back in a second. Hey guys, welcome back to Cigar Chat, brought to you live on CigarFederation.com, broadcast around the world, the Armed Forces Radio Network. Thanks for tuning in and hanging out with us today. We're here with Joel from Crux Cigars, Big Tuna sitting in for Logan. You're uh, you're gonna smoke that thing down until it burns your fingers, Seth. <clears throat> no, I just burned my, I just burned myself. So <laughs> it was actually a good time. I'm glad I, I don't know if that out. has to do with the cigar <laughs> just me being. Slightly inebriated, but whatever it is, I'm we're going. Moving, we're moving on to the we're moving on to the nymphomaniac because this is just a beauty. I'm going yeah. with user, user error on that burn. That's what I'm going with. Um, so, what, are you smoking <laughs> That's the? That's a good uh, review, though, right? What's that? That's a good uh, visual review. If he burns himself on the cigar, it's usually yeah, a good sign. Exactly. You're smoking it's, it down. It's a very good sign. He, yeah. was, he was even smoking it on that little sword thing that he was using. I don't know what was going on there, but looked like. Yeah, uh, it's my little. It's my little, little that's your deal. Yeah, that's your deal. Yeah. Um, so let's uh, let's jump in, uh, Seth. I'm gonna start going rapid fire on some of these questions. Feel free to jump in whenever you like. Um, so let's see. This one's from uh, CRA James. Uh, he says uh, you guys have hit social media pretty hard. Uh, how has that approach helped you with spreading the word about your brand? 
Um, and so do you have? Uh, oh, and, and well, yeah. Let's let's start with that part. How's social media been as far as you know helping you kind of get some legs behind your brand? Oh, I think it's critical. You know, as a small brand, um, you know, we we didn't enter this with a million dollars in our bank account uh, for advertising and getting out on the road. So uh, the it was a, a huge group of guys that yourselves included, and you're you're certainly a part of this educational process where the consumers today have access to more information and more of this basically this insider inside of the cigar world than they ever have before, and uh, and social media is a big part of that. It's it's uh, it's making better consumers and informed consumers a better consumer, and, and when guys can learn more about cigars, they become more excited about something. Um, and, it's uh, it's indispensable, and uh, I feel like the cost is right <laughs> as far as that goes too. Yeah, uh, just cost certainly a little cheaper than uh, a half page spread in Cigar Aficionado. Yeah, no kidding. Um, <clears throat> so now, do you guys? I know you, you've got obviously you're you're in some B and M's. Or do you guys sell online anywhere? Um, we we aren't uh, we're not preventing our retailers from selling online. So if they have an online uh, presence, they're welcome to sell the cigars on on their sites. Uh, we're not really in any specifically online stores just online, yet. Yeah, yeah our, our production still, it's, it's, we're in their first release phase. The second production is coming in, in about a week, week and a half here, where we'll be able to open some more doors up and get, get into some more retail stores that are hopefully patiently waiting, um, and, uh, and, and that'll grow from there. So cigars are being rolled as we speak, and uh, probably not right now, but <laughs> you know what I mean. Um, and rolled and aging, so we're we're growing it as as fast as we can, as fast as it needs to be grown, and don't want to get too far ahead of ourselves as far as that goes. Cool. Um, got another question here from uh, CRA James. When when you what what flavor profile do you personally gravitate towards? I personally I like a cigar as you say creamy. I like to have a mouth watery effect on a cigar, and and I like some spice to it as well. Something that. Something that's kind of interesting. The retro hail has some a little zing to it, but not too, not too uh, over the top. Um, so that's kind of what I gravitate towards. I don't like typically heavy cigars, real full fl- full body cigars. I think, you know, for me, if typically I'm just usually having a, cl- a cup of coffee with my cigars, so I don't have, I get the chance to cut it with scotch or triple or whatever it is you're drinking there um, as often as I'd like. So. <laughs> So who knows what I'm drinking? Yeah, I don't, I don't know. I'd, I'd stay away from whatever's in the in Seth's glass. <laughs> they typically fall in this that is, range. This is uh, bigger flavor, less this body. Is tuna water. Okay. Tuna water. <laughs> yeah. oh, awesome. Tuna water. Um, that's um, that's gross, actually. Um, yeah. <laughs> a question here from Charlie. Um, he says, "I just picked up from my local B and M. You got the passport and the Corona and the Lancero, the original and the uh, Bear and the Bull." Uh, I said, which one did you suggest that I smoke first? Yeah. Um, yeah, I don't know. I, I, I like them all. I mean, my, my first choice would be the Corona, probably, if it was just me and staring at that pile of cigars. But uh, I'd say you go with what, you're, what you like. You know, I, don't, I don't know what your, what your uh, preferences are. You go, let's go with your strengths and then kind of work your way around. But um, I think the, uh, the Corona is an excellent starting point as far as that goes. And, like you say, the experience is that starting out with a, a, a little more pepper than you probably would typically go for, but you're, you're, you acclimated to it. Um, but that kind of would set the stage. And so if you do the Corona and then a couple of days later follow it up the Lancero and then the Bull and Bear, I think that's going to, they're all going to paint a little picture for you um, without, uh, you know, in a row. I'd probably, <laughs> start, I'd probably start with the Lancero, then the Corona, then the Bull and Bear if you're going to piggyback them. If, if you're if you're gonna be real about it, then you got to go with all of them, and then you got to start with that Lancero. That's that's uh, that's that's a pretty good menu to take on for an afternoon. That's for sure. Yeah, I think um, so. So uh, I got a question here from Punch Nubbit, um, <clears throat> and it's, it's really I'll, I'm gonna paraphrase this question. Uh, this is a little wordy. Uh, in reference to the number of cigars that you guys came to market with, we we touched on this a little bit earlier. Um, do you feel that that's that's helped you guys? Uh, really kind of hit a bunch of different markets with having so many different cigars or is it maybe sometimes you get like at the show maybe somebody comes into your booth and they can maybe get a little bit overwhelmed because there's so much new stuff to try yeah I think it's, it's helped um, it does it does appear daunting but it's 
11 to 13 facings. You know, so it's not a it's not a significant um, volume of of, uh, of facings, but it's it's helped to have options. And certainly realizing that as we go to these these retailers and we talk to them face to face, they might have a huge and zero following in their store. They might have nothing but 60 smokers, and so they're going to see that classic and that bull and bear and be and be drawn to that, and maybe not have the interest that they uh, another retailer would with Passport or or Nymphomaniac for that matter. Um, I think that small format, that Skeeter, that's a kind of sort uh, this kind of cigar that virtually all retailers carry in one way or another, and it's. Uh, it's the kind of cigar that once guys find a, 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 a Purito that they like, that's what they smoke forever. They don't even try anything else. <laughs> uh, they just come back and buy 10 of them every three days. But uh, it's, uh, So it's nice to have that variety, I guess, to answer the question. Um, it is daunting, of course, but uh, get an opportunity to explain all the different blends and, and, uh, and they look at the, the, the size charts and, and uh, it, it seems to make sense to them when they, when they look at it. So. Yeah, I prefer that, that than having five lines with 15 sizes in each line. Yeah, no, that's 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 a good way to put it. I mean, for me, looking at it from a consumer standpoint, um, I find it kind of exciting. You know, it's a new company, it's a new brand, and we're always about what's new, what's new, what's new. Uh, I'm sure three or four people on the side have asked, okay, well, what's coming out next? I mean, you guys just came on the market, and everybody wants to know what's new. So having a, a new brand come out with you know, all these different options, different sizes, different blends. You know, you've got the, the cool sizes, some of the smaller ring gauges, things like that to try. I see it as exciting. Um, and it's, you know, it, it, we can, we, we, I'll speak for the collective we, uh, gravitate towards stuff like that. So um, I think, I mean, just from my standpoint, that it was, it's, it's a nice, uh, it's a nice little menu to choose from, uh, you know, right at the beginning. Um, got a question here from Cigar Warden. Um, <clears throat> what are the difficulties that you've had uh, with with everything being so new, um, you know, jumping into the the industry, going from retailer to uh, manufacturer, what are some of the biggest hurdles uh, that you've had to overcome? Well, big hurdle. Um, you really get an appreciation for uh, the uh, the time it takes to get things done, um, things that are in our control and things that are out of our control. So the biggest hurdle would just be getting. You know, a trip from Minnesota down to Nicaragua takes all day, and yeah. and uh, <laughs> and it's an early flight, by the way. It's pretty early. It's a 5 a.m. flight just to get down to Miami in time. But um, so when you factor all those things in, it's just everything takes time, and you got to have patience, and you got to have the ability to push your expected dates back, and uh, and hopefully uh, not be in too bad a shape when those expected dates kind of don't get met. But uh, <laughs> The uh, that's kind of the hardest thing. It's the lack of control being being up here in Minnesota. So several dozen trips down to my uh, not Miami, um, down to Nicaragua, and just to be in the factory and, and uh, being there when production happens and making sure everything gets assembled in the way we're we're looking for it to be. And I think that's that's really the the biggest struggle. Um, everything else has been I'm not going to say easy. But a little more expected, and a little more planned for, and a little more in our control. Yeah, so. I think that's that's yeah. I, I, sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off, but I like the way that you described that because I mean we've we've had this show for a couple of years. I don't, we're going on three years now. We've asked these questions a lot, and no, it's never easy. There's always something. Um, but you know, for for you guys to be in that position where it's like that, yeah, the, the most the most difficult thing, the hardest thing to deal with is these trips down to uh, to. To uh, to Nicaragua, I mean, especially for you, that's like you said, that's a full day trip. Um, that's pretty good. I think you guys have been pretty lucky so far. If that's if that's kind of your biggest uh, <laughs> knock on wood, right? If that's your biggest well, maybe, concern. Maybe my bar is set very low for uh, things that, or very high for things that are. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, maybe. Me. <laughs> that could be it too. Okay, so we got. We're going to start a rumor here. Um, this is a question from Stefan Lindblad. Uh, he says, uh, recently saw some pics on social media of you hanging out with Skip Martin from Romacraft. Uh, any future plans for you to work with him or his factory? Well, first of all, that wasn't me. That was Jeff, um, but uh, oh. my partner, Jeff. But uh, known Skip for a long time, and uh, Skip's a great host, and he's willing to open up his house when you go down to Nicaragua and, and uh, nice dinners and, and drinks and, and the like. Um Love what he's done. He's done some really cool things. Uh, he and Mike have done some great things in the in the industry, and, and really taking their craft concept and growing that very uh, 
very uh, very much on their own terms. Um, we're not working on anything right now with Skip, just good friends. Skip, who knows? Is, yeah, he's the, we'll lo is the local is the local Florida Condo distributor. Yeah, no so. kidding, right? God, it, yeah. If you follow you follow Skip on uh, Instagram, and you're going to see good food and Florida Condo always. Yeah. My yeah. life is not as good as his every time I open Instagram. <laughs> <laughs> it does make you, it makes me a little bit sad about my life too, but that's yeah. that's all right. That's all right. Um, so we got a question here. Are you following the game? Game started. Packers and the Vikings. I'm not following it. You're not following it, so I guess we'll just no. skip that one then. Uh, the question. He wants to know who's winning. This is from. Uh, I'll check it out. I'll yeah, check, check it. I'll out. check it out. Just pull it up. We've got the we've got the those interwebs. Um, I would say, based on the injury report and the location, the Vikings are only down by 12 to 17 <laughs> points right now. And I don't know when the Packers game started. Packers seven, Packers seven, Vikings zero. Oh, seven nothing. That's not too bad. It's well, you're only you're probably in the second quarter. Um, so another question from my bill. Uh, oh, go ahead. What do you got? I was gonna say my my Bills are already losing 14 nothing, and they don't play till Sunday. Yeah, How they don't even possible? kick off until Sunday. <laughs> um, so uh, one question I think we got, uh, this will probably be our last one, um, in, in reference to your packaging, uh, this is from, from Man Angel. This is, your packaging is unique. Uh, can you give us just a little bit of background how you guys came up with the concept? As far as the box packaging goes, uh, burned a lot of calories on, on every aspect of this, and the box was, was no different. Um, you know, there's a lot of ways you can go with boxes. We went all the way from one end of the spectrum with, crazy, you know, the passport, we had steamer trunks designed with stamps from all over, down to very traditional slide top boxes, and we kind of settled a little more closer to the slide top box idea, um, because it's it's very shelf efficient, um, um, thinking as a retailer, want to make sure that we can present as many items as we can in the smallest footprint. So, that slide top box, 10 by 2 design, that's a, a real classic look, uh, 10 cigars across, but the, the the five pack, ten pack thing kind of came out of the desire for the the box art. You know, you open the box up, and there's great art on the inside of the lid. But usually, every retailer's got more shelves than their humidor can handle, and, and you kind of lose that box box art underneath that shelf. So we didn't want to lose the color that you get with that and the graphic ability. And it ended up just kind of organically happening that we just created these five packs that would be in the box right next to the individual cigars. You know, so everything comes in five packs. Retailer opens it up, so you have individual cigars and a five pack right next to it. Um, and that's that's really where that came from. You got a little go bag right there, perfect disposable cigar case. Yeah, that has a uh, almost like an online feel to it. For somebody who buys cigars online, you can buy a single, you can buy a five pack. But if I go into my local B and M, they don't have five packs. But right. I mean, you guys have it packaged that way. It's pretty interesting. If you guys want to check it out, go to CruxCigars.com. They have a nice, uh, a nice setup. You can see all the photos of everything, just so you can take a look if you haven't seen them. Um, so that's going to wrap up our uh, AFRN segment for today. Um, I know we didn't get to all the questions, but I think we touched on most of them. Um, the ones that mattered anyway, there were some silly questions in there. Not that they don't matter, but those are the ones we get to later. Uh, and uh, so, Joel, really appreciate you hanging out, man. Thanks for taking the time to chat with us. Um, best of luck in the future. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Appreciate it. Guys, thanks for tuning in on uh, Armed Forces Radio Network. We'll be back uh, next week. We've got Dissident Cigars. That's going to be an interesting show. I'll have to have the uh, the drop button ready for that one. I think there's going to be a little bit of, uh, especially if we have Logan back in the fold, it's going to be crazy. So uh, that'll be a fun show. You can check us out, CigarFederation.com. Thanks, guys. Appreciate it. Everybody have a great weekend. Stay safe. Okay, we're back to our final segment here where we can say, you know, shit, bitch, cock, balls, whatever you want to say. Uh, you, you don't, you don't, you don't oh, have to, you don't have to I was ready to explore. Yeah, I know. I, you don't have to celebrate it, but, you know, Logan likes to. You, you can always just say earmuffs, you know, whatever you want. Um, so we've got some giveaways we've got to get to. That's uh, Seth, that's your deal. I know there's a lot of weasels out there waiting on these giveaways. Uh, just to let everybody know, we're going to pick. Those motherfuckers. Yeah, for real. We're going to pick six live winners tonight. Uh, two um, two winners from the podcast. So for a podcast winner, email me, rob at cigarfederation.com. In the title, put uh, Crux Cigars Podcast, and just tell us what uh, what I was smoking and what Seth was smoking. And then give me your name and your full mailing address, and we'll get back to you with the winner. So we're going to pick two podcast winners, six live winners tonight. Seth, how are we going to do that? 
I got six questions. That's good, because I really only gave you one job, and this is it, so don't fuck it up. I did it. I got six questions, man. I'm on top of this. All right, go. I wouldn't have the answers lined up. All right. So are I they don't gonna, know how we're going to do it, but I'm going to... Are you going to ask the questions and people are going to email you, or what? Or are we just going to have people gonna, just answer? Gonna, go ahead. They're going to email you, man. They're going to email oh, you. Email me. Okay, fantastic. Yeah, don't email me, man. I don't, I don't deal with that. All right. Six, all right. So how are we going to do this? Here are the six questions... And I guess, you know, if you get them all right or something like that, we'll do the highest, six highest ratings. How's that, Rahab? So you're going to have to do the math. Jesus. All right. This is going to take all some right. time. First question. How many lines does Crux Cigars currently have on the market? All right. That's question one. Question one. Question two. Before starting Crux Cigars, what were these guys doing in the industry? Here's the hint. What was their tobacco shop and where was it? Okay. That's question two. Question three, where did the name Crux come from? What is the meaning of the word? Oh, people have to be paying four. attention for this stuff. Dude, I don't fuck around. <laughs> Question four, Mar Marblehead. Marblehead, what is the origin of that title? What What was the name of that specific cigar that they, that they fed off of? Question five, who are they working with down in Nicaragua, a.k.a. whose factory are they using? Question six, what is Joel's preference of regions for Nicaraguan tobacco with the same region as Rob and myself? I think I actually know all the answers. You should. You're on the show. It's almost like I was, but it's almost terrible. like I was paying attention. I'm very proud of you for that. That's awesome. <laughs> Way to go, Rob. I get, I'm going to give you a virtual pat on the back. Thank you. I appreciate that. I appreciate that. Um, so let me see, I'm going to just kind of cruise through here. Seth, if you got any questions, jump in. I'm going to see if there were any that we missed. That was your cue to jump in with the questions while I'm out here reading. I was going to – I thought you had one all lined up and so forth like that. No, so, I'm, just, any, I'm just looking. You have five on the market. Are, are you guys are you guys thinking about another line? Are you guys going to focus on those five right now? Anything in the works kind of maybe? Yeah, you know, there's definitely uh, – we have uh, many things kind of on in the folder, let's just say. Um, for the, the focus for this year is just going to be the launch of Crux and getting the five lines out there, getting good retailers that are going to get behind the brand and getting consumers to try the cigar and then hopefully buy more and more. So um, I think it's way too early to be bringing anything new into the mix. Um, we did add two sizes to the uh, passports that we hadn't initially uh, planned on, and that was that was really just uh, almost out of fun that we we were going down and said, let's just roll up a few of these and see if these work pretty well. And then I, that's all I wanted to smoke for the next five days, so I decided that was a good size, the 40 by 4. So other than that, you know, we certainly have other blends that we're excited about that, that uh, are in the works or, or halfway home, but nothing that, nothing that we're going to put on the market yet this year. Next no, right. next question. Connecticut Broadleaf or Mexican San Andreas or neither? On a cigar for me? On a, on a cigar for you. Well, that's a loaded question. You, <laughs> can't get Connecticut. There's no Connecticut. I'm a, I'm a loaded guy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you are. There's no Connecticut to be found, so uh, it's a great tobacco, but it's, it's just in such short supply right now that... Uh, you know, it, it would be uh, almost crazy to even start working on a project like that. So that would be my, my choice. That is it. But I like Mexican too. Tricky answer. Too. Yeah. <laughs> so I, we've got some uh, responses here to um, – wow, we've got a bunch um, – to, to these questions here. I'm going to go through and just try to verify that these are correct. Um, so, Seth, go ahead and ask two more questions for me. You son of a gun, man. <laughs> what is your, what, what, what is your preferred... Nothing going on. Yeah, ahead. I have the answer. No, I, 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 know, I, I know the answers. Rob, I got them. I didn't get Rob the answer key, but I had no, it. What is your preferred, what, what's your preferred Vitola? Me, what, I what, love... What do you want to smoke? I love, uh, Corona Gordas, Coronas, you know, 44, 46 ring gauge, 5 to 6 inches, that's... That's a size that typically satisfies for me, and uh, that's the one I gravitate uh, first towards and tend to stick to. Um, so anybody that can make one of those 
in uh, in, a, in a blend that satisfies me is going to have a, a happy guy. It's a it's a it's a great size Corona Now looking at other people's smokes because it's always interesting to see what you guys smoke besides Crux. Are there certain cigars, not just lines, but are there certain cigars that you have in your humidor that are like personal favorites? It's oh so yeah, absolutely. Right. Yeah, um, Epernay is a is a cigar that I find to be a, a any time any day cigar, um, and it's, it's yeah. spectacular. Uh, mentioned Roma Craft, uh, love their Intemperance line. And certainly in the uh, the AWS, the BA AWS is a, that's a spectacular cigar. And that new little one that yeah. came out at the show is really good too. I don't have any idea what the name of that is, but it's really good. <laughs> in the uh, in the Brazilian yeah, wrapper. Go ahead. Yeah, the chrome. No, I was going to no, say that chrome magnon, right? No, not chrome magnon. Uh, Neanderthal. No, it's in the Intemperance no. line. Oh, I'm sorry. I was only halfway listening. <laughs> yeah, that that AWS, that Lonsdale. The Lonsdale and the Brazilian Intemperance, I, I, I agree with you. It's hands down probably the best cigar, I think that that, that Skip has put out there. Yeah, it's quite good. I agree or not. It's really good. It's quite good. Um, yeah. Gosh, man, Seth loves those Lonsdale. This guy knows what this this I do. And this guy knows what he's talking about, man. I'm just speechless. <laughs> so. All right, well that's good because I got, got all the quiz questions right too. I got it right down here. I didn't email it. Though. You you got them all right. Yeah, I, I didn't. Don't know, but you've got them. I didn't, didn't you, seem fair. you didn't try to win. Doesn't seem fair. Um, fair. So I've got all the winners. So you guys can stop emailing me. Yeah. Um, everybody can stop, and everybody can stop. And actually, I think everybody got them right, except for. Uh, well, well, don't, don't call the don't call the guy. No, no, out. no, no, no. One guy emailed the podcast saying, "Oh, there's the podcast question." It's like, dude, you're watching it live because it hasn't even gone to the podcast yet. <laughs> so, uh, so I'll, I'll, I'll call him out, but that's all right. I won't call him out by name, but he knows who he is. You know who you are. I'm trying to cheat. Um, okay, so winners for today's show, and you guys got to pay attention because you have to email me again and put winner in the title. And if you email me and put winner in the title and you didn't win, I'll know, and then you'll never win again. Um, Anthony Russo, <laughs> winner. Uh, Stefan Lindblad, winner. CRA James, winner. Uh, oh, wow, I can't even read my own writing. Um, this is, oh, Man Angel, winner, Matthew Ty, winner, and Jay Zarada, winner, even though, Jay, you didn't give me your uh, name and address, and I think you actually live in Canada, so that's going to be a pain in the ass, but anyway, we'll figure all that out, so those are our winners, um, and podcast winners will come later, guys, you can't, you can't submit to a podcast question when it's not even on the podcast yet. Um, okay, so those are our winners. I think we covered all the questions. I told Joel I'd have him here for about an hour. We're right about there. Um, Seth, any brilliant parting words? Crickets, that's perfect. Always check your, re <laughs> always check your resources. I don't know. Always that. check your resources. Okay, well, that's, always be prepared. That's good. That's, uh, that's, those are good words to live by. That's good. Joel, we appreciate it, man. Thanks so much for taking the time and hanging out with us. Um, being generous with these giveaways, we've got a bunch of guys who are going to be able to try your product now, um, so that's uh, that's exciting. So hopefully these guys will come back to Cigar Federation, post some reviews, and give give us some 97s and some 98s because uh, that's that's what we want to see. Um, thanks again, really do appreciate it. Well, thank you. It's fantastic. I really appreciate the opportunity. You know, as a small company, this is uh, getting in front of a bunch of uh, Real cigar enthusiasts at the, in in a focused environment like this is really invaluable. So I appreciate that, and I hope you guys enjoy the cigars. Thanks. Yeah. No, I I enjoyed Thank the Thank you, Joel. Um, and I'm looking forward to some of these. I'm actually going to go ahead and review uh, probably the classic. I think based on all the the uh, the specs on these, that's the one that's going to hit my palate the best. So I'm excited to try that one out. Um, looking forward so to 90, that. 90, 95 is good. I mean, oh, oh yeah. We'll we'll you know we'll see. No no promises. Um, any, anything to get to get over 93, it gets expensive, man. <laughs> it gets expensive. Um, All right, just give me the address. Yeah, you know, I mean, obviously, I'm, <laughs> I'm I'm speaking in jest, but and that's how rumors start, by the way. That's how rumors um, start. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm already tweeting. I'm already tweeting it right now. Payola reviews. Is buying uh, what? Oh, yeah, yeah. That's <laughs> Is, yeah, yeah. Hashtag payola. Yeah, it's a payola review. Um, so yeah, really do appreciate it, guys. Thanks for the support so much. CigarFederation.com is where you can find us. Um, check out our YouTube channel. Check us out on iTunes. We're all over the place, podcasts and everything. 
Um, we'll be back next week with Dissident Cigars. Um, we'll have some reviews coming up the Dissident Block. It's a nice smoke if you guys haven't tried that one. Uh, that's going to be an interesting show. We're going to need the... Uh, I, we met those guys at IPCPR, and, and Logan got a, along with them a little too well, so I kind of hope that, Seth, you're going to be filling in next week again because <laughs> it, it might get a little I bit crazy. Not. It might get a little bit crazy with those guys. But uh, anyway, guys, thanks for the support. We appreciate it. Uh, everybody have a good weekend, Joel. Best of luck moving forward, and uh, we'll be in touch You know, when all the new releases, because you guys, the new releases, that Connecticut we talked about when that's coming out, um, and your uh, your collaboration with... Uh, with uh, <laughs> the Roma Craft collaboration. With the Roma yeah. Clap. Yeah, it's going to be perfect. Yeah. All right, guys, appreciate it. Everybody have a good weekend. Stay safe. Thanks, fellas.